All right, looks like I'm live. Hey everyone, great to see you. Happy Sunday. I know I don't usually come to you on a Sunday, but we're changing up a little bit with the holidays. Uh, happy belated Thanksgiving to everyone. Thank you all so much for joining and just checking in for another episode of In Conversation. As you can see, I have a slightly different set. I'm actually in my parents' house in Michigan. Um, so it's a little bit of a switch up here, but still have a great episode in store. Um, in case you didn't see the flyer, this is the beginning of a series I call my holiday series. And so love the holidays. Uh, I celebrate Christmas and I just love the joy, the happiness in the air. And I know this year has been a lot going on. People may not be super excited. What's up, sir? Thank you so much for joining. Good to see you. Um, but yeah, so I'm kind of hoping to keep the joy and just keep it really um, exciting. And so today is actually my first series where I have two guests. So I will be having uh, the founder of Taylor Pieces, uh, LaParis Hawkins on, and she makes beautiful handcrafted um, home decor as well as some hair accessories and head wraps. And then I have my returning guest, uh, Stevie and Latrika from Eileen Allen Candle Company. So really excited to share with these both of these brands have in store for the holidays. Uh, share the story of Taylor Pieces since we haven't had her as a guest yet. Thank you guys for joining. I see Troy, I see my parents. Thank you guys for joining. Um, and excited to see what Ivy and Alan have new for the holiday season. So I know yesterday was Small Business Saturday. I said, let's make it Small Business Weekend. So we're gonna keep it going. Um, I really just wanna share these um, these two brands that I'm friends with the founders of both and I really just love and believe in their products and hopefully you guys will love them and you will feel uh, moved to purchase things for gifts for the holiday season. I think it's super meaningful what they create. So we're going to get into it. So let me go ahead and add in um, La Paris from Taylor Pieces. So we did. Uh, hopefully she'll be joining soon. I think I did that correct. We'll see. Hey. Hi. How are you? Happy Sunday. I'm good. How are you? Good. You look so cute. Oh, thank you. You too. I love this purple lip. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I was like, I know it's the holiday series, but I didn't do purple instead of red. So. Yes. <laughs> thank you. So how was your Thanksgiving? How's everything? You, my like, Thanksgiving was relaxing. I just kind of, um, I just cooked and just chilled and watched movies and, and like FaceTime my family. Okay. Nice. But it was good. That's... How was yours? Yes. It was good. It was good. Um, mm -hmm. I'm here in Michigan. So kind of, you know, hanging out at my parents' house. So again, it was chill. It was just the three of us chilling, mm -hmm. watching TV. We ate, so it was good. Yeah, well, good that you're there because New York probably will shut down again. Yes, oh, no. no. and yeah, and I was glad. I was super safe when I came, um, and I've been, you know, whatever I know I'm going to be around people or around the people, try and get tested and all that. So, you know, it's mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a whole thing now. <laughs> yes, the like whole thought process for everything. <laughs> Um, question for you. How is my my picture for you? Am I coming in clear today? And also anyone watching, let me know. I'm on Wi-Fi, so not sure how that goes. Yeah, I think you are great. How am I? Can let you me hear me? Good. Okay. You're, am I slow? You're, I can hear you. It's a little delayed. It's a little delayed yeah, and a little fuzzy, but I do see. Oh, man. Okay. Well, I don't know. Hopefully that will help us out. If everyone watching, thank you guys for joining. I see Larry, um, AM Spence, thank you guys. If you have issues, just type in comments that there are issues and we'll try and figure this out. But you know, technology doesn't always work. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, okay, well, welcome LaParis. Thank you so much for oh, being to come on. Me. Of course. Of course. We're excited to just like hear your story prior to Taylor Pieces and how you got to Taylor Pieces. Yeah. Um, so I grew up in a family full of uh, matriarchs. Um, I feel like they could do it all. Um, and so I grew up like sewing and having like fashion shows after like going like thrifting 
and doing all these really cool things. And so um, it's so interesting how things come full circle because I went to uh, University of Missouri to be a writer, a journalist. I was an English major. And then I moved to New York in 2012 and I was just hit the ground running. I uh, was a beauty and fashion writer. I wrote for um, Essence and Ebony and ESPN and a host of other pu publications. And um, I guess it was right before digital really kind of just took over. And I was thinking, oh, you know, magazine writing is fun, but it's also, it can be very um, formulaic. So yeah. I was like, well, you know, I want to be more creative in how I write. So I was still at Essence at the time. And I, um, I just started um, writing my first novel. And I was like, oh, okay, this is what I want to do. This is amazing. Wow. Um, so it's tucked in a drawer. Hopefully no one ever reads it. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just, yeah. You know, when you first take a swing at something, it may not be the best, but you're just getting your feet wet. Okay. Um, so, um, so that's actually what I'm doing. I'm closing in on my second novel, and hopefully it can be traditionally published next year. And in the meantime, I know, right? Um, yes. In the meantime, I did, made a, I guess, like a sacrifice and a decision not to take any media jobs like I was like I don't want to take any media jobs you know even though I have a plethora of experience in it I just know that it will consume my time and I just want to write my books and figure out the rest so I had been working retail until I could figure out the rest um and um I also like um review novels before they come out for the uh, American Library Association so I still like in the book world but you know so during quarantine, I was furloughed, and you know, you was I was just around. Oh, let me redecorate. Let me do this. <laughs> let me do that. Ordering Project. curtains. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just doing a little bit of everything. And um, my personal style, I think, is very um, eccentric. And I'm always into head wraps and different things. And I had like a lot of fabric because I just would buy them to use for head wraps. And I was like, what if I take these, like, take this fabric and, like, my roommate had um, a sewing machine. What if I made some pillows? This would be cute because my room is kind of, like, just solid colors. I was like, oh, that would be cute. So I took, I made the pillows and then I posted them on my Instagram story and it blew, my DMs blew up. Like, oh, my God, could you make me some? Oh, my God, could you? And I got so many and I was like, well... <laughs> I guess, yeah. And I was a little hesitant, you know, how you're just nervous when anything is new. Yeah. But I'm also thinking, you know, well, this isn't part of the plan. Like, I know how to sew, but I never thought that it would turn into anything. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, I'll get some fabric. I had to, like, source fabric from somewhere online because everything was closed. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. God. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to make a few pillows. And then I'm just going to put them up, and then I'm just going to see. Okay. And I think probably within a couple hours, they were sold out. And I was like, what <laughs> is happening? <laughs> and so everyone else was like, wait, I need more pillows. And I was just like, oh, my God. So then I started making head wraps, and then now I'm making bonnets and pillow covers. Yes. And it just doesn't stop. And it's like uh, one of those things where it's like a fortunate blessing where you didn't see it coming, where you're just like, well, I'm enjoying the ride. Right. And so I'm just a one woman shop. I package <laughs> everything and make everything myself. So that's yeah. awesome. I mean, talk to you for having the idea and then going with it. Because I think so many times, like, I'm definitely getting, I have plenty of really cool photo projects in my mind that I have not brought to fruition so props mm -hmm. to you on actually going through with it and creating them and just like also you know just putting it up you know yeah happened yeah it is nervous like I was very nervous it's very nerve-wracking I was like yeah. oh, what if I just look crazy <laughs> no one buys it but that's the risk you gotta take yeah definitely I think I mean that's so true and I keep reminding myself or I'm your story is one that reminds me like just try it. You know, a lot of times we try 
like all the way through. Like, let me think through everything and see what's mm-hmm. happen. What I really know. And then it's like, just try it. Just take one step mm-hmm. and then see what. And I think sometimes uh, social media makes us a little more hesitant because you see these people who are running like these mega companies are like, I made a million dollars in 20 minutes. And you're just like, what is going on? <laughs> like, but I think, I mean, that's what life is. It's like a culmination of like success and failures and you don't get yep. the success if you don't try. So Absolutely. just do it. That's so true. You're right. You're right. What's up, everybody joining? Thank you. Um, my first guest is Paris Hall. Amazing. She's the founder of Taylor's Pieces. If you guys have any comments or questions, drop them in the comment or question box. Feel free. Um, so what, how did you come up with the name? Oh, wow. Um, so I think like circa 2011. Okay. This is before you had a this was before, yeah, this was like, oh. this is like right when I moved here. Okay. Everyone had a blog. Like, oh, if yes. you weren't blogging, I don't know what you were doing with your life. <laughs> so, <laughs> the name of my blog was Taylor Silhouette, and it was kind of like along the lines of like tailoring life's experiences for yours, because I think everyone can learn from someone else, just tailor it to fit you. Yep. So, um, it, I kind of stemmed from that oh and then and maybe see I've had a lot of failures um in 2014 I had an (laughs) online vintage shop and it was called I think it was called tailored pieces it was an online um it was an online vintage shop and it was tailored pieces and it it always just stuck with me I just really liked it um and so when I when I launched this one it was like a no-brainer Okay, nice. Well, let's see. We have a comment to see some samples. Do you have any pieces around you? I do. Um, it's coming too, but these are the pillow covers I made. And as you can see them. Yes. Um, and then it comes with this like hidden zipper at the bottom. Oh, okay. Yep. So you can remove it, take it okay. off. Oh, nice. Um, wash them. They're, and we can, they're washable. You can wash it. Yeah, they're washable. They're cotton. Um, this is for an 18 by 18 uh, okay. size pillow. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have um, these satin line bonnets. I don't know if you can see the inside Ooh. of them. And um, yes. this particular pa- um, pattern, I have it in Mommy and Me. So I have the little bitty bonnets for the babies. That's so um, cute. I- that concept was so cute. I've never seen it before. Uh-huh. But like some photos on your Instagram of like mommy and me with their matching bonnets are yes. so cute. I got so many. De- now this was like probably my best seller. I didn't expect this one to do that well. But as soon yeah. as I posted it, like they were gone. Um, wow. So yeah, they, they come in all different sizes um, from zero months all the way up until a, like adult. I have all the sizes. Oh, um, wow. And then it's like a pink, a pink satin. It has so an elastic band that is not too tight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it goes on your hair. And then um, this is a new style Ooh. called King that I am launching tomorrow, part of my Black Friday. Oh, the website address is tailoredpieces.com. Okay. Um, and this one's satin lined. Nice. So is that, you said this is a different style than the last one? Yeah, it's like, it's just a different pattern. So this one's lined in black. Yep. Um, And then I have, one second. Sure. I have these satin pillows to sleep on, which makes a great for a Christmas gift. So this part is satin. And the satin is just... Yeah, the purple. The purple is the satin. Okay, and all the satin products are just better on your hair, whatever your hair. Yeah, so it retains moisture. So you know, if you sleep, if you sleep on cotton, especially uh, with black people, our hair, the kinkier our hair is, um, when you lay Mm -hmm. on a a cotton pillow, it drains the moisture out of your hair. Um, So Mm -hmm. you can do either a um, a bonnet and sleep on a cotton pillow. Or if you're just lazy like me, honey, some days, I'm just like, I am tired. 
I just Same. use a satin pillow. And then the back is just like a cotton African print design. Nice. Um, which has also been doing really well. So I've been blessed. Um, nothing for beers just yet. I'm working okay. on it. Something for okay. the fellas is coming soon. <laughs> Okay, nice. So what um, inspires the patterns? Like what makes you choose those particular textiles and colors and everything? Yeah, I just I honestly pick patterns that I'm moved by. Um, if I see okay. something, I'm just like, Oh, okay, I don't make anything that I wouldn't personally want for myself. Like, um, mm -hmm. this pattern for me, is it's like, it's very similar to the classic Kente pattern that I did when I first started. it. Um, yeah. But I, the pops of purple, I'm like, oh, should I just make me a set? And it's just like, okay, LaParis, it's not for you. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I just, like, buy this everything. I just want to keep one of everything. Um, yeah. But, yeah, like, the patterns that I think that I try to make them not overwhelm a room. Like, if I feel like it's going to be in someone's home, I don't. I just want it to be an eccentric, like, part of your space. I don't want to, like, take away, like, oh, what is all this? Sometimes yeah. the patterns can be a little bit too busy, and mm -hmm. um, it can be distracting. And that's not the goal. It's just to kind of accentuate whatever you have. Okay, nice. Um, so I guess I'm trying to figure out how to ask this question. Um, so it's interesting to me that you chose to, you know, you were you you are a writer and you were in publishing and. Consciously chose to take a nine to five that is not that to allow you the time. Can mm -hmm. you the time to dedicate? Can you talk a little bit about that as well, like that decision and all of that? Girl, listen. Uh, <laughs> it, it, I would say that it is the road less travel, but it is. It has been hard. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, Oh, yes, you know, I just didn't take a nine to five. No, it has been extremely, extremely hard. I've had a lot of just nonsense jobs. Um, mm. But I've been blessed to keep, keep a few hustles in my back pocket where I can always kind of figure it out. But yeah. I just I just know that um, I'm just going to speak from my experience. Being Absolutely. in um, a corporate environment, I feel like it kind of just smothers me and like engulfs all of my time and energy and then when I come home I don't want to do anything for me I just want to stare at the tv or I just want to like you know just kind of tune everything out and I knew that that wouldn't be beneficial for um me, my creativity and me as a writer so right. I just chose like I don't necessarily don't quit your job you know I uh wouldn't necessarily recommend it but I just chose something where I can just go home go to work, do my job. When I come home, I'm for, focused on being creative and it kind of motivates me because I'm not as comfortable, like I'm not where I want to be. So it's not like, oh, I'm right. like, you know, I have this to lean back on. Oh, I'll get to the book. It's like, oh, I got to get out of here. Let me, you know, it kind of like <laughs> reignites me <laughs> to like yeah. stay focused on the goal and not become too comfortable. Um, so that's right. just like my own way of checks and balances and making sure that like I'm staying on the goal and not getting sidetracked with money or like other things that is not um, part of my purpose. Yeah, exactly. And so speaking of your purpose, um, do you do you and how do you if so feel like tailored pieces is like kind of woven into your purpose or is it? You know. I have been sitting with this for like a couple of months because I just started um, the business in April. So I've been okay. trying to figure it out because in my mind, this wasn't part of the plan. Like I didn't see uh, me starting a business. I didn't see like, like I said, I've known how to sew my whole life and I just didn't right. see it as part of the plan. But I think it's going to be one of those things where God kind of like weaves it in and it'll all make sense. Um, I come from a family of entrepreneurs. So it's not like, my, like, even my grandmother walked me through the whole, like, LLC process. Um, wow. I don't think it is, like, as far left as maybe I think. Like I said, I've been in fashion and, and um, designing my entire life. I just thought it was just something I knew how to do or, like, just a natural talent. Um, but I, like, as, when I am a published author here soon, um, my goal is to never be, like, 
and like I don't want to write books for money like I of mm -hmm. course it's a business and I want to handle my business very well but I also want to have other entrepreneurial um enterprises going that will support me or real estate or anything that will support me that I'm not only you know because I don't want to flush out the purpose just for money so um I don't know maybe like some boutiques one day um I had this really crazy idea I wanted to do like um a um velvet head wrap that was uh, satin lined for the winter time so you don't if you don't have into hats like me <laughs> you can Ooh, have that's... something cute to wear with your coat <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I have all of these like great ideas. It's just all about like execution and time, and you yeah. know, getting it out there. Since I am like doing it all myself, so yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Where did your inspiration come from? Is it just I know it started with things you just wanted in your own home, mm -hmm. and then how did where you get inspired after that? That's a good question. Um, I think it's just stuff that I want. I think it mm -hmm. was getting cold in New York, and I was like, oh my god, I hate hats. I always have braids or something, so my, like, scullies are, like, wide and too big. And I was yep. like, hmm. And then I, I was actually talking to a friend, and she was talking about her head wraps in the winter and how they're too harsh on her hair. And I was like, well, I should make satin lined. You know what I mean? So it protects your hair, keeps in the moisture, and you're warm. But it's also really fashionable and really cute. Yep. So, um, I don't know. That's what I have, like, in, so, I'm working with in progress. So, we shall see how that turns out. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So, I have a little quick fill-in-the-blank sentence for you. Okay. I'm um, ready. Finish this statement. Okay. Something from Tailored Pieces is the perfect gift for someone who, blank. Wait. It's, wait, wait. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, there's two blanks. Okay, no, no, no. Well, actually, okay. it could. I didn't write it as two blanks, but it actually could be. Okay. So it could be. It could be blank from tailored pieces is the perfect gift for someone who blank. Mm -hmm. Or it could be an item from tailored pieces is a perfect gift for someone who blank. Oh, got so, it. Okay. Um, so I would say um, an item from tailored pieces is the perfect gift for someone. You know, we all have that eccentric friend you know, um, who is, um, I don't want to say woke because I hate that term, um, who is very aware <laughs> of herself okay. and her surroundings. Um, I would do a classic bonnet, you know, you can't go wrong there. Um, every woman needs to protect her hair at night, every, all of us, and we all have like five mm -hmm. stash somewhere. So you can't go wrong with a nice bonnet <laughs> with a different pattern. <laughs> right um and even like yep. i would say a satin pillow satin. it doesn't have to be yeah like a satin pillow it doesn't have to be decorative it's something that she's gonna need every night um i think it's a very mm -hmm. unique and considerate gift so yeah nice okay and then the pieces that you've shown up are your latest drops for holiday or is there more coming yes so um I have some earrings dropping too as well. Um, but these are also coming in um, kids as well. So before I had only did this pattern in the kids and it did so well. Um, I wanted to do maybe a more gender neutral um, yeah. color. So baby boys um, mm -hmm. or men actually with locks. They could yep. also wear this and then not, not feel like it's too feminine or you know whatever floats your boat. Right. So um, this one I'm expanding to um, kids' sizes as well. Maybe even like daddy and me bonnets, you know, That's if you so and your son have locks or anything. I think that would be cool. That's so cute. <laughs> I love it. Um, dang, I just was about to ask you something and I <laughs> Um, Man, and it was such a good question too. Oh, wow. I don't remember. <laughs> Um, so where can people get your things again? Where can you shop tailored pieces? Yeah, so um everything is not gonna if you go there now, everything's gonna say it's sold out because it hasn't launched, but it'll be up tomorrow. Um okay. I'm gonna say noon Eastern time. Okay. 
Um, and it's going to be on tailoredpieces.com. That's T A I L O R E D pieces, P I E C E S uh, dot com. Awesome. And you can follow us on Instagram as well. Definitely. Make sure y'all follow Taylor Pieces. Yes. Um, do you guys do any custom orders yet? We do. Actually, that's how I learned how to do the pillow covers with the um, with the zippers. Mm -hmm. um, at first, I was only doing pillows that were stuffed, and that would have become a hassle to ship. Yes. Um, that's, so that's initially what I started out with. And then mm -hmm. um, I had a woman with a really nice brownstone in Harlem reach out to me, and she wanted some pillow covers for her balcony. So mm -hmm. I literally, so most of it I'm self-taught. I taught myself how to um, make some pillow covers and zip into her, and they went over so well. Um, and then when I did a second launch of them, they were, like, the first to sell out. So, um, yeah, pillow covers. I'm really, really excited. And they're easy to store, um, unlike pillows with stuffing in them. And you're more likely to change them out if you have it that way with the zipper. That's so true because I, you know, having a small apartment in Harlem, mm -hmm. I don't have things. And I know my cousin's girlfriend changes their home every season. Like, wow. That pillow covers are so perfect for that because it's mm -hmm. not like you store pillows. It's literally yeah. just put them with the linen, you know, out of when I start the house. <laughs> yep. You can put them right in a little, you know, container and tuck them away uh, when you're not using them. And it's a lot yeah. more convenient. So I feel like most people now are gearing towards more towards pillow covers. So I haven't actually made the stuffed pillows in a while, but I do do custom orders on my website is my email. And that's how most people get in touch with me. They'll just shoot me an email, ask me a question, and then we'll work out the details from there. Um, but yeah, I've done um, like yoga pillows, med meditation pillows for people to sit on while they're meditating. People have gotten very creative. And I actually, I love it because I feel like that adds to my creativity when like creating new things. So. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's a well, I work, our time is coming and for you and I, but any last words, definitely um, make sure you guys are following your pieces and you're shopping when everything drops tomorrow at noon time. But any, any final words you want to share? No, I just want to thank everyone. Like, I think the support for my business, um, I've only been in like six months, six, seven months, and it's been overwhelming. And I'm just extremely grateful. Um, and just know, like, if you shot with me, this is something that has been handmade by me coming into your house. I don't know how spiritual people are, but I do pray over my orders that my um, that my items usher good energy into the spaces of people's homes because I don't take that lightly. Um, and so, yeah, tomorrow um, at noon Eastern time, um, 11 a.m. Central time on TaylorPieces.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, LaParis. Good luck with everything. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. We'll have to have you back when you have the next drop. You know, we'll, we'll keep going. <laughs> okay, I'm here for it. <laughs> well, well, I will talk to you later. Thank you so much again for your time. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye. And now, okay, we're still here. Great. So we're going to switch over to, I think we're still here, hopefully, um, Ivy and Allen, who make Candles for the Culture is their hashtag, which I love. Um, hopefully you guys are still seeing me, but I think you are. Okay, there we go. Welcome to everyone who has joined for the first episode of my Hallier series, focusing on small businesses. We just heard from LaParis, who's the founder of Tailored Pieces. Definitely check them out her website, her Instagram, and now we're going to add Ivy and Allen in. And if you have seen a previous episode, they were my guest, I'd say last month, I think it was October. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, hey. Happy holidays. Welcome, welcome. Happy holidays. Happy holiday. <laughs> Hi. Thank you, thank you. Going. Good, Good. yeah. Been, we've been blessed. This holiday season is um, definitely special for us, so lots to celebrate. I know y'all had some <laughs> big announcement a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yes, it. absolutely. We got engaged, so 
quick flex. Um, yeah. yeah, very excited about that. So um, we're planning for that in 2021 and, you know, and also plans for our business too coming up. Some good stuff coming up. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't well, so for people who may not know the story yet behind Ivy and Allen, can you guys mm -hmm. just talk a little bit about how you got started and your brand overall? Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so we started... Um, I guess back in April, um, trying to find a way to like a quarantine kind of relationship building product project and also a way to make some extra money, pay out some debt, pay out some bills. So um, originally I was looking at subscription boxes and then I came across a mock-up of a candle. I knew that she was interested in candles. I was not interested in candles, but I thought it could be something that we could figure out how to bond over. So mm -hmm. or bond doing so um yeah so far it's been going really good uh, we've learned a lot um just as far as working with vendors um and suppliers working with shipping all the different you know platforms and apps and mm -hmm. ads and everything so it's still a learning process but so far we've gotten a lot of great support from our friends and family um mm -hmm. they've ordered a lot of candles they've told a lot of people so we're we're actually we're breaking into that next layer of people. Like it's not just friends and family now. It's friends of friends of friends of family or people that just saw us on Instagram because somebody else posted or something like that. Or so, repeat repeat business and things of that nature. Yeah. yeah. So wow. um there have been some some downs. Um probably more so with like shipping and just a, like now shipping is bad because of the holidays. Before that, it was because everybody's trying to figure out pandemic shipping. Um, right. And then we don't always agree on everything. So we, <laughs> so it's it's been helpful in helping us to learn how to communicate, sorry, helping me learn how to communicate better. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Communicate my my issues and my thoughts better. So it's it has helped me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you want to add? Oh no, you said it all. You that's exactly how it's <laughs> how it's been with us. Um, but I mean, it's a work in progress. Progress, and we're learning right. daily. You know how to make our business better, how to make our relationship partnership better, and yeah, I mean, it's I wouldn't want to do it with anyone else. Oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love having you on. Thank you for being my <laughs> guest, by the way. This is my oh, first yeah, thank absolutely. You for, thank you for having us again. Please, of course, of course. And it's awesome to have you here. Um, so I think when we last spoke, you were about to launch the Homecoming Collection. Correct. So yeah. how did that go? I loved it, by the way. I love the Homecoming Collection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. But what was feedback and stuff on that collection? Um, all the feedback has been really good. We haven't really received any negative feedback on our candles. Um, not too much. The, the, I think the only negative feedback would, or the main negative feedback would be when we're sold out of something and people want more mm -hmm. or can you make a yeah. bigger size? It's only, but for example, some of our, uh, the homecoming collection only came in four ounce sizes, but there were some requests. And I guess this isn't negative feedback, but there are requests to, after we, you know, sold out to, can you make this in a bigger size? So I don't have to buy two, four ounces or, you know, can I get a 10 ounce of, oh. uh, when it was a family reunion or game day, game day was yeah. really popular. Um, and we're just about sold out. I think we have like five more, um, of the VIP ones left and they're on sale, but, um, oh. they're just about, that was your favorite one. Hello. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's it's interesting though. Like some of the some of the scents were more popular than others, so we're considering maybe incorporating them into like our main line. So that's yeah, that's new. <laughs> yeah. So some yeah, we're kind of we're paying attention to you know feedback we get from either friends or family or just how people post and stuff like that, and just mm -hmm. seeing which one people seeing which ones people really like. Um, for example, she'll get into the holiday ones soon but we have one that's called Friendsgiving um mm -hmm. which is also very popular but 
Friendsgiving is kind of up until Thanksgiving, like through this weekend, and now the thing doesn't make as much sense. So mm -hmm. we yeah. may um, we may add that to to our line next year as a as a different permanent candle. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Well, we can get into a little bit. What do you guys want to start sharing? Let's see what you have for the season. Um, so like Steve stated, uh, we have um, our Friendsgiving candle. Do like the influencers yes. do. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, you, well, you're familiar with um, some of our, our look. Our usual jars are like and tins are like black or silver, but we decided to go with a gold tin for the holidays. And we kept with our... Um, coconut soy wax um and our wooden wick so this is our about that yeah um so we we we're gonna, gonna that's, 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 yeah that's definitely our um our our model like we we love the wooden wick look you know it gives that luxury feeling that luxury look and so with this scent it's like a hot toddy um it's like a spiced pear type fragrance um is sweet and like steve said it was pretty popular so i think we're probably going to make this into a larger size um coming soon so stay tuned for that and the second one is our ugly christmas candle um oh, cute yeah yes. and it's the same deal with the wax and the wooden wick um and this scent is a raw cinnamon and clove um fragrance mm. and so it literally smells like like walking into like a it's a, like opening your presents on christmas morning that and like <laughs> walking into like a michael's or something like a nice smelling like holiday store like i mean it's, yeah. it's literally like a holiday a hol the holidays in the tin so um we have um more of our christmas candles available and only a few of these um left um but you can celebrate friendsgiving um all year and I, we actually had a few people that ordered the Friendsgiving and, and sent them out to individual friends because they were trying to do that this year, but it got canceled. Um, right. So I thought that was a really cool idea. Um, if you're, right. if you are um, buying them as gifts, this, the holiday, they're both great scents, but to me, early Christmas candle is like Christmas time, but the Friendsgiving can really be like year round. Like it smells great. Yeah. It's it's more fall, but it it can it really it smells great. This one I would be I would want like to have on a sweater and <laughs> cocoa or something for yeah. the Almost. ugly Christmas candle. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think uh -oh. we had a question. Yes, we did. I was just gonna go there. Radiant Rhonda, go ahead. I growing pains. Growing pains. Ooh. Um, I would say, Go ahead. well, for me, it was, um, well, a couple of things. One, um, transitioning from like doing events to selling consumer goods was a little bit different because it's always on marketing versus like marketing to a certain event and then moving on. And then just, like I said, we had a lot of support from friends and family. So we sold out of our first batch in like a week, mm -hmm. which we weren't prepared for. And then we had to then the suppliers we had to like we're hearing we're like rushing to make orders and they're taking their time to send everything we've gotten uh, some stuff wrong so we learned to like build in time for the suppliers so yeah we can have a supply for the demand yep totally i think yeah. for me i think my biggest real pain i think i may have said this on the last um in conversation uh was the fact that i tend to like cross all my T's, dot all my I's, and like, I want everything to be perfect before it's released. And Steve is just like, let's like, let's get it out, let's get it done. And I'm, I'm more like, you know, we need to change this label first, or this needs to be, this font needs to be bigger, and all this stuff. And, and he's like, let's just see how it goes. Let's just put it out there and see the kind of feedback we get. And like, you know, and usually it, end up, it ends up working out. And so um, I think that that for me, it was like trusting the process and trusting myself and trusting him, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, and, and knowing that he was an entrepreneur before this and, you know, just kind of leaning on him, him from some, for some understanding in, in terms of how things go and how, how, how your mindset is supposed to be. Yeah. And did you guys, 
So you both have had careers, obviously, before April, mm -hmm. <laughs> when you started the brand. Have you sort of pulled in skills and learnings from your other careers to this company, to Ivy and Allen? Yeah, definitely for me. Like, so I'm a research coordinator, and I think you need to have a level of organization. And he probably would say I'm probably not that organized, but I think I do bring some um, aspect of organization to this work as far as, like, just – from like how we organize like our storage area and how we keep um, things in order in our living space because we're literally operating out of an apartment. And, yeah. um, you know, just organizing like inventory and spreadsheets and all that stuff. Like, you know, you have to be able to um, build the, those type of systems in order to, to work efficiently, so. Yeah. And um, I come from a marketing background, so um yeah definitely have used that to try to build try to build our audience and you know increase traffic to the site but you know even with that um it's still a learning curve and learning how to do um very specific things like instead of just hitting promote on your instagram app to, to promote a post mm -hmm. actually going in and creating an ad campaign and yeah. you know a b testing and that's just a lot of stuff that wasn't really my side of the business so now i'm learning that so that i can add that to my skill set and also so that we can you know try to grow the business absolutely um we have a couple of questions is there a major advantage for using a wooden wick versus your traditional string wick um initially uh full transparency i think we went with the wooden wick because of the look and we knew we wanted to be um on the level of like a luxury brand branded candles and mm -hmm. we thought that the wooden wick gives that and so as but as we started to do like burn tests and and like really get into the weeds of like actually structuring the candle i find that wooden wicks burn better um you know how sometimes when you burn a candle with a cotton wick or the string wick you know it's like it can be kind of it burn like it burns like lopsided or it doesn't burn fully to the edges of the jar and i find that the wooden wick does that like a a high percentage of the time like it 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 definitely gives like a full burn um to mm -hmm. for your candle and um that's and that's one of the advantages i found with using one yeah i just hate when the wig curls up and you can't light it anymore <laughs> but you still got a lot of candle left so i have that issue with so many other candles and i right. literally the other day i was like what do i do the scent i love the scent but the wick is yeah. gone I don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That happens. All right. Another question. Is it harder to come up with the name or the sense of your mm. candles? Um, I would say probably the scent. For me, the scent. Um, just because I think yeah. we, we try to, we know the themes and I guess the vibes that we want to go for. And it's just kind of like, we, we try so hard to like, come up with scents or pick scents that actually make you think of those things. And, yeah. you know, it's so many different vendors out there, so many different people out there, you know, the options that you can choose from. And so, you know, just trying to pick that one, you know what I mean? I think it's, it's, it's probably the, the most difficult part. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, we have a plethora of names and new kind of vibes we want to go with, but it's like, there's no, I can't just go to Walmart and buy, you know, scents, right? So there's a lot of different vendors. They vary in quality, but you don't know, like each oil can vary in quality. And so you don't know, like you might order two scents from a certain company. One can smell great and one can smell super cheap. So you don't, you have to like order. It's a lot of testing um, and research. So we kind of also keep, uh, like if we like something, we might we may just stash it away for later, um, so that we can come back to like we may not have a name for it right now, or may not have a you know room for it on you know on the site, but uh, we'll come back to it. So that's kind of how we've been doing. But it seems like every time we come up with something, a new name or a new vibe, like we have to get. For example, happiness over everything. I think um, we had a certain scent, and then we had to go back because they were there some some research came out that it was toxic mm -hmm. and it could small it could cause cancer 
We never saw that candle, no. by the way. We never <laughs> saw that candle. We but changed that's, the like, that's like very scary to hear. Like, all yeah. of a sudden, this might cause cancer. What? Yeah, mm -hmm. one of my one of the vendors put like sent out a I think they sent out an email or put it on their site when we were trying to order it, and we were ready to press the button. Like, this is our scent and didn't work out. Luckily, we had some uh, backup scents that we had already had, and we knew that people were in search of, well, we had requests for a lavender mm -hmm. candle. And so mm -hmm. we used that as an opportunity to use one of the lavender scents we had researched, and so it all worked out. But yeah, it can be a challenge sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. So are you guys, now that you've been in the candle business for a few, you know, almost what, six plus months now, are you mm -hmm. like finding everywhere? Are you like out run to the grocery store? Or like, oh, wait, that would make a good candle. So do you, where do you get your inspiration from? So for me, it's like, um, I, I don't know. I, I stay on those um, vendor sites a lot and they come out with like, um, like kits and stuff that you can like purchase and buy. Um, Fun story. I Friendsgiving almost smelled like sweet potato, uh, sweet potato pie, because uh, yeah. <laughs> because I mean, like around this time during Thanksgiving, like I I want sweet potato pie. So I was like, you know, it, it, am, am I making this candle for me or am I making this candle for you know potential customers? So I had to like think about that. Uh, but it, I guess it really just depends on you know for me what what kind of what kind of mood or vibe we want or what's missing from our line. You know what I mean? Like we have, I feel like we touch certain areas. We got a candle for the vanilla lover. We got a candle for the masculine smelling, you know, per, you know, per, person that wants a masculine smelling candle. You know, we have a fruity tropical candle, you know? So it's kind of like, what are we missing? And I think that's typically what I, I tend to think about in our, in our production. I, it's, when I go out now, well, I've always been like, like ideas so like it didn't I don't think it sparked any new like when I go out now I'm thinking only an extra candles but I think what it did do is now I go whenever I see a candle I have to pick it up I have to smell it I have to see if I know what what uh, fragrance oils they use or where they got this container mm -hmm. and how much it cost and how much they upselled it and so that's kind of more how it's changed the way I think because usually I probably I mean a candle is a candle but now I know a lot more and and then to her our point i just wanted to say like um we we another struggle i guess with me is if you're making the candle for yourself or if you're making it for everybody else mm -hmm. and so we have to like i think i know what's cool or what other people are like but i also don't know a whole lot about candles so it's been like trying to find that middle ground and trying to make sure that we um don't forget that we're making it for other people which is why when we when we add it, when we're adding to our line and coming up with new th new scents for next year, and what I what we had we talked about and decided there are some candles that we think are dope, but they don't fit for Ivy and Allen. Mm -hmm. So next year is hopefully we'll expand into some other adding more candles to our line, but also some different brands of candles that cater to different targets. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. How do you figure out what is your brand? You know, because you've created this company, you're literally currently developing it. Is it just you sort of know, like, we love it. It just doesn't feel like us. You're kind of, how do you, you know, how do you kind of tangibly or know, like, what is our brand? How have you decided that and figured that out? We usually just argue till somebody gives up. <laughs> and then that's how the decision is made. Okay. No, um, I think, <laughs> I think, um, well, for me, I thought that I felt like the target was a little bit more, um, I knew I was going to just promote the candles to the people I promoted parties to. And okay. while I knew that and like candles were becoming a bigger thing is a trend. And so I thought that would work. Now, what I've learned from like our analytics is that it's a small port it's a portion of the people like everybody can buy candles but the repeat buyers the people who are really interested in like oh this has a wooden wick or i need a vanilla note in my candle da, da, da. those are like a specific age specific so it's like mm. so with these i still i want to take a, a portion of my entire crowd which is mainly african-american so we're mainly targeting african-american women but 
we also know that these are make great gifts for men. We have some masculine sense. And a lot, we target women, but we have a lot of male buyers. So it's like, we're still developing our brand. We, I know we want to target like upperly mobile African-American millennials, but um, sometimes we, some sense skew more towards women, some skew more towards men. And so I just have to figure, I also have a focus group of guys who you all know. Oh my God. Alex, <laughs> all men, all yeah. men, all men. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> I think some of them may still be on the call, but <laughs> we have a little marketing focus group of people who who are from all different backgrounds, but we're all friends and work in different mm -hmm. industries. And but I mean, it works so yeah. far. It's worked. Yeah. Um, do you have a lot of repeat business? Is a question. We do. Um, we do. Uh, we probably have more repeat business than new business right now, but yeah. um, we've been doing a lot of things as far as advertising and doing different holiday things in conversations with Nikki and stuff like that that help us get, you know, reach different audiences and get some new customers. Yeah. Um, okay, do you, yeah we, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was done. Oh, I was going to say holiday promos going on. Oh, do you want to talk about the promo? Well, we do have a Black Friday promo that's um, going on right now, and it's going to go until tomorrow at midnight. Uh, it's 20% off, and the code is BFCM2020. I'm sorry, I'm looking at something. Yes, the code is, uh, it's also on our website. So when you go there, the first thing you see is the actual promo code for, yeah, the, um, for, the, um, for the holiday sale. Okay, and what's the website? IvyandAllen.com. Yeah. Okay. I-V-E-Y-A-N-D-A-L-L-E-N.com. Make sure y'all are going to their website, following them if you don't follow yeah. them. The candles are dope. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's interesting you were talking about a focus group. And as you're both talking, you clearly both wear so many hats. And as a small business, that is sort of what it is. Like you're kind of in all of these different areas. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounds like at least in the customer opinions i guess it's, you do have like a focus group at certain other people you turn to um is that been uh, really helpful in this process i think it has i think um a lot of the feedback we do get um i mean there there have been some um new customer feedback but a lot of it is from friends and family and people that we know and even like I've had friends of friends send me screenshots of things other people have said to them about our candles. And I'm like, man, can you please go to our website and make and put it in a review? You know what I mean? Like that's, I think that's the part that we're kind of, uh, you know, trying to push more. Like we want people to actually put what they're saying on our, on our site so that others can see, you know, um, what people's experiences are like. And so, um, yeah, I, I think, um, I, I, I think that most of that feedback has come from folks who will tell it like it is like, look, girl, like, don't like, I need you to make a bigger size. It is, or like, you know, the, the wick, um, you know, could be, you know, could, you know, could, you can cut it down a little bit more or something like that. And, you know, we take it in, in stride and we, we make adjustments where we need to. Um, but we really just, we, we really want to just push people more to making like actual reviews online, good or bad. You know what I mean? We want people to know what it's like to have our candles in their homes. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. Um, and then oh, I keep losing my train of thought. Oh, so it seems like what you guys are talking about, we also saw with La Paris, who was on before you, is just that it's sort of an evolution, like the creating and building of this brand is an evolution. You know, you, mm -hmm. you know, you're saying Stevie pushes you is just like, hey, put it out and we'll see what happens. I think a lot of people get frozen and like, but what if it doesn't work? Da -da 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 -da. Right. So how has that been? Just like, okay, go and see. Has that process really worked for you rather than like holding everything back and waiting till you think it's perfect? Um, no. <laughs> it has not worked for me. I think um, one example is I feel like our happiness over everything candle, um, our lavender based candle. I, I struggled a lot with that one for, for whatever reason, because I'm not a big lavender fan, but I knew that 
that was a, a piece missing to the puzzle of, of the puzzle. And I felt like, you know, I, I really wanted to pick the right lavender scent. I really wanted to make sure it smelled good. I really, I, I don't know. I just feel like lavender is, is, an, is an acquired thing. Like I'd rather smell like a lavender plant than a lavender candle, if that makes sense. And I just, I, it, it would have came out sooner um, than when it actually did. And I think that was because I, I was holding back and not putting it out there like, you know, we stated earlier. And I, I think that's the beauty of like our team, you know, and how we work together. And it's like, you know, he's probably thinking from a different perspective, like, you know, like, let's just, just let's go. Like, I made these labels, like, you know, I, I made this promo, like, it's ready. Like, so just make it and put it out yeah. there. And I'm like, no, no, no. And so it's, that balance, I think, works. Um, but like, yeah, I think um, to answer your question, I, I, I feel like there there have been moments where I do feel like waiting is just not um, beneficial for the for our for our business. And so, yeah. I don't know. For me, I've just I've failed a lot at a lot of different things. I failed, but then I came back. I was able to come back from those failures, right? So, I. I throw a party, nobody comes, lose money. If I stop right there, then I lose money. I forget it, I forget about the dream. I throw another party, then I make money. And so it's it's like, you just gotta, I, I would rather fail fast, right? So if I'm gonna try something, if I get paralyzed in fear or trying to make it perfect, then it just never gets done. And it's just an ongoing dream or like project. Okay. And I want to, with this, this actually stemmed from an ongoing dream of project to a subscription service that I was trying to do. And when this came about, I was like, listen, it's a pandemic. I got no more excuses. We just got to go for it, put some stuff out. If you take a look at all the successful candle businesses that, that are, I'm not talking about like Bath and Body Works and Yankee Candles, but a lot of the black owned candle businesses, they've, mm -hmm they've made a lot of changes over the years and you can if you go back and look at their instagram they, it didn't happen overnight they've made a lot of changes they have stuff that worked some stuff that didn't work and you know it's not the path to success is not going to be you know straight right. it's going right. to be a crooked road or whatever so i'd rather get those mess ups out than toil over it and then if it's wrong i'm gonna feel even worse if i didn't put that much energy into it then it doesn't matter. You know, I can always just go back and make it better. So, yeah, definitely. Well, time is kind of winding down. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Sorry, it's happening. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Ooh, Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> what you drinking? Peppermint mocha. You know, I'm all oh. in that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but what is in store for you guys, holiday season and beyond? What can we expect from Ivy and Allen? Um, so we have a – go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. No, Maybe. no, please. See. Well, uh, this – well, we were just this past Friday uh, on the Jack and Jill of uh, North Suburban Dallas, uh, 12 Days of Christmas, um, mm -hmm. like vendor fair. And that has really um, helped us get a lot of sales here in Dallas. And so we're continuing with doing some other stuff similar to that. Um, we're doing a 12 days of Christmas, well, working with 12 days of Christmas Inc. in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, shout out to Dom. Uh, they're doing an auction on this coming Saturday. So um, check that out. Um, we're also working with Chef Lean to do a 12, 12 days of Christmas uh, promotion with her as well. So just trying to do a whole lot of, holiday marketing just to kind of throw stuff at the wall see see what works and what doesn't work with that and then um next year one of our goals is to along with adding new candles and hopefully expanding is to um start a subscription service for the candles so that you can so a lot of our repeat buyer well it's actually a repeat buyer who he requested it we were already talking about it but um he was like, I would love to be able to just get your candles every month, a refill every month, and I have to worry about ordering and going back to the site. Yeah. And so, we were like, maybe we should look into it. So, right. like, like would you? We can fix that. <laughs> <laughs> like, we can make that happen. 
Because I, probably the last couple of years, personally, is when I've really gotten into burning candles. And then when they're gone, I'm like, okay, what do I do? Do I go find some more? Do I just yeah. like go to incense? Like, what am I going to do? But to have them just here. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we're definitely excited about that one. And um, yeah, it's, it, I mean, that's a blessing, like for a, a customer to make, to, to make that sort of recommendation and to like give us that kind of insight. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that says a lot about our product, you know, like just, our, our our customer service and so yeah. yeah you can learn a lot from listening to customers because that mm -hmm. that same customer also suggested we do a local pickup which i think he just did for himself because he didn't want to pay shipping <laughs> but then he would have gotten free shipping because of the amount of candles anyway right. <laughs> we added that and there have been you know several people that i think that had told me they were going to purchase or whatever and hadn't and now they're doing local pickup or you know so I think it's a, if it's safe, because another thing is probably boring, but you have to pay more here in Dallas than if you ordered the candle out of state because there's different taxes. So they, they were going to have to pay delivery on top of taxes. So now at least they won't have to pay delivery. They can come come to the shopping center near us and pick it up. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. I'm super excited to have had you again. I'm very excited about what is coming and what is here for the holiday. Yeah. Um, any last you want to share at all? Anything like that? Um, no, just thank you to you. Thank you to all of our customers and our friends and family for your Hive. support. The Ivy Hive, as Steve calls them. Um, <laughs> like, um, I, I mean, we, I mean, we haven't even been at this for a year, and I mean, we, it's, it's been great. You know, I mean, I'm not saying we're like at the level of Bath and Body Works, I mean, I'm sorry, um, Yankee Candle or anything like that. But I do think starting off, like it's definitely exceeded my expectations. So, and that's because of you, people like you and all of our, our supporters, so. And I'll just say happy holidays. Yes. Thanks again for having us on. And go to ivnl.com and use the <laughs> discount code BFCM2020 to get 20% off everything in the store until tomorrow at midnight. Okay, one last, last fill in the blank. You know, I did a fill in the okay. blank with, okay. Um, a candle from Ivy and Allen is the perfect gift for someone who, blank. Uh, someone who loves being social or miss, misses being social because of our themes. Uh, someone who values self-care and someone who just enjoys creating the vibes in their space. Perfect. Good. That's, yeah. good. that's what I learned about. That's what I learned about communication. You just let her communicate oh my and say it's perfect. It was awesome. Well, thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate you for sharing. Thank you, everyone who has tuned in, dropped questions, um, and stay tuned for more from the Holiday series. Definitely make sure you guys are following Ivy and Allen and Tailored Pieces, and get some good gifts for the holiday. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Great stocking stuffers. Talk to you later. Bye. 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 Bye.